Donald Trump's actions after the election raised some doubt about whether he'll go quietly into that good night. Cases of the coronavirus surged in the Midwest, and that prompts the governors of Iowa and Illinois to tighten restrictions in hopes of containing the virus. Yet, the approaches are still different. We'll get to that this morning with Rock Island County Republican Party Chair Drew Milkey and former Rock Island Mayor Mark Schwieber, a Democrat. Great to see you both as always. We're going to start with the pandemic. This latest surge of the coronavirus we've mentioned hitting the Midwest especially hard. Our Governor Kim Reynolds and Illinois Governor Jamie Pritzker added some new restrictions. Iowa went through a couple of changes this week. First, the governor called for a limited mask mandate. Then a couple of days later, instituted a, a full mask mandate. It applies essentially for indoor public places where people can't social distance. There are crowd limits for indoor and outdoor gatherings. High school sports can continue in Iowa. Service businesses like restaurants can't stay open with limited hours. Retail businesses can't stay open but must implement reasonable measures to promote public health. That guidance is somewhat vague. It's tougher for Illinois. There is a mask mandate. Casinos, museums, theaters, event spaces, and more need to shut down. No high school sports for now. Restaurants can stay open, but no indoor service. And there are capacity limits on retail businesses that vary by type, but are specific. And this is all just to name a few. Well, you can see the differences in those. And Dr. Anthony Fauci this week says we're at the point where adjustments won't make much of a difference unless they're uniform. So I ask you both, how much worse does this have to get for this to stop essentially being partisan? Mark, I want to start with you. Well, I, I do think that, as you said, this shouldn't be a partisan issue. Anthony Fauci's been at this through six presidencies, I think, and working with different presidents on a bipartisan basis. And this is uh, the thing that we, I think, are missing is we're making this a cultural issue, and it's not. It's a medical issue. It's a health care issue. Uh, 250,000 people have died in this country. That's five times the number that died in the war in Vietnam and over half of the total that died in World War II. Uh, and that's only been within the last year. I mean, this is this is a this is a serious health issue. Uh, it's gratifying to see that, that Governor Reynolds is uh, in now imposing some kind of a limited uh, face wearing mandate. But you know, it's it's just been known for months that the key ways of controlling this thing are mask wearing, social distancing, and you know, good hand hygiene. It's not rocket science, and it's something we need to be getting at. I think the thing that you mentioned, though, that really is needed is we need national standards. We need a uniform approach to this. One of the reasons that the United States is worst in the world right now with uh, COVID infection rates per population is because we haven't had a uniform policy that has gotten this thing under control. It's affecting the economy and it's affecting all of us. I think we all know people now who've suffered from this thing or died from it, and it, it needs to stop. Drew, how do you think this can stop from being partisan? Well, I, I totally agree with everything former Mayor Schwiebert said. It shouldn't be partisan, but all we have to do is look into Iowa versus Illinois and how they're handling this. And it looks partisan only in that our governor of Illinois has decided to go it alone and make decisions on the bars and restaurants that affect the Illinois Quad Cities. And Iowa is handling, handling it quite a bit different, differently. And that's putting our Illinois Quad City business at a severe disadvantage. And um, the thing about going it alone is that the governors unilaterally made these decisions and locked out the legislature. So there's no ba there's no balance of government with it's just the governor is making edicts on these uh, going shutting down our Illinois Quad City bars and restaurants. And so I agree wholeheartedly uh, with everything Mayor Schwieber said. There should be. Uh, national standards if we can at least get the states to agree even if it doesn't have to be have some kind of code of codifying directive because uh, our Illinois Quad City businesses uh, I, I can tell you there are I've met with sev several times with uh, the business owner the bar and restaurant owners in Illinois Quad Cities and I don't think they're going to make it and so we're going to have we're just giving up our business in Iowa Quad Cities and that's not what we want to do I would just I'd just like to respond to that. I think that I, Drew makes a good point that it is really hard on our businesses. That's why we need a uniform strategy that affects both sides of the river consistently. I will say this, Governor Re Reynolds has done the same thing Pritzker's done in Illinois in terms of acting unilaterally. The difference is she hasn't even allowed local governments to take precautions. She said the state's going to control it. And you can see what's happening in Iowa. It's just out of control. I mean, their rates over there are now running two to three times what they are in the Illinois Quad Cities. And that's 
Not a good situation economically. That's not a good situation from the standpoint of public health. We need to get this under control. Let's, let's move to the aftermath of the presidential election. The result is almost a mirror image of the key battleground states from four years ago, but more reluctance for the loser to accept. And here's what we've seen. Donald Trump said before the election, actually, he's a bad loser. He still hasn't conceded. And Hillary Clinton, I want to remind you, conceded the day after the election results projected she lost four years ago. This week, or recently, President Trump fired Defense Secretary Mark Esper. Three other longtime Pentagon employees resigned because of it. They were replaced by Trump loyalists. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the State Department is getting ready for a second term of the Trump administration. And the General Services Administration will cooperate with the Biden transition team. So I guess I want to ask is, does this sound like a man who plans to leave office, Drew? Uh, it sounds like uh, a campaign and a president that wishes to assure that all legal votes are counted. And if we want to unite this country, which I, I really do believe that both Democrats and Republicans do, then we don't want to go forward until with half the country thinking that this is um, these are not valid elections. And, uh, you know, why are we tabulating votes in Germany on foreign servers from a Venezuelan company called Dominion? Uh, that that's just fraught with error. But you know what? We should let the, let this play out. Uh, there's no rush as far as the media calls it. And that's fine. The media can do what they need to do. But just like we saw in 2020 with the Bush uh, Gore, there, there, there's a legal process for this, and that's why it's there. And I think we owe it to the American people to make sure that we have confidence in our elections. Otherwise, we're going to have, regardless of who uh, is president, we're going to have a black mark on our American democracy. Well, Bush v. Gore in 2000 was just one state in play. There are several states here, and they've the gap is much wider than even Florida was. Mark, what's your take here? Well, I would just say this. I think if any of us had a child that had behaved like Donald Trump has behaved for the last weeks since the election, we would have put him in a corner for a long time out or taken him out to the woodshed. I mean, nobody likes to lose, but there is a loser. And in this election, it happened to be Donald Trump. What we really don't like is a sore loser. And that's what we have here. He's behind by as many electoral votes now as he defeated Hillary by in 2016 when he declared it was a landslide. On election night, when he was slightly ahead in a number of states, he wanted to stop the voting. Now he's got secretaries of state, Republican and Democrat alike, but particularly Republican secretaries of state that he's attacking because they're not giving him the result he wants. We have here a person who is badly out of control and he's jeopardizing our democracy, he's jeopardizing our foreign policy, he's jeopardizing our response to the COVID. I mean, never have we had a president in my lifetime, and I've been around for a few years, where you had someone who didn't re cooperate with the incoming president in terms of just providing them with the basic information they'll need when they take over in January. Uh, and, and that hasn't been done in this case. I mean, this is an instance of not only extremely poor sportsmanship, it's a behavior that almost is treasonous to our country because what it does to betray the de democratic system that we're all part of and that he has benefited from and that we all believe it. And that's just inexcusable. To me, this is, this is almost criminal conduct on his part. And, uh, and he ought to be ashamed and people shouldn't be encouraging him in it. Mark Schriebert, Drew Milkey, thanks so much for the conversation. Both of you be safe. Uh, I, I do disagree with that. These are illegal votes and it's going to come out... Uh, Cindy Powell has said she's going to have the evidence. So there's no, there's no conjecture here until we actually see the hard evidence. And well, I think it's interesting. I think that it's interesting that every judge who's looked at this thing, Republican and Democrat alike, has said no and given the thumbs down to these bogus arguments that Donald Trump is making. He's leaving the office in disgrace, and that's a shame because a person shouldn't do that. That's going to hurt their well, reputation. I, I submit that this could be a very corrupt election, and we need to find out. We owe it to the American people. It's not about President Trump anymore. It's about how we all voted. And I, there was a blue wave, or excuse me, there was a red wave, and this is not reflective, and that, that's what overwhelmed the algorithms and the demand. It'll come out, and we don't have to conjecture between us. We'll find out the facts, and that's what I want to do is find out the facts. Well, let me just say that when Donald Trump first uh, said that uh, he thought the election was bogus, he was behind by 4 million votes. He's now behind by 6 million votes. If he keeps this up, he's going to have a landslide against him. It's not going his way, and it's not going to go his way. We need to get on with the future of rebuilding America together.
Well, we'll see what comes of it. And that's what I'm hoping for, to see the truth. All right, Mark Schwebert, Drew Milkey, always interesting with you two. Thanks so much. Be safe. Now, our question of the week. What do you think about the different pandemic response approaches taken by Illinois and Iowa this week? Send your answer by email to for the record at whbf.com or respond to this post on Facebook at the local 4 News WHBF-TV page or on my page.